That's the history of the Arabs and the Jews, the cousins that separated in the second millennium because of the Jews' belief in one God and the Arabs' refusal to do that. Good afternoon, friends. Today, I'm going to reveal some very interesting insights from genetic genealogical research on the origin, the common origin of the Arabs and the Jews. And I'm gonna tell you how and when they diverge from each other. But before I do, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, like the video, and comment on the video for the sake of the algorithm. Now let's get started. First, I wanna mention something. The Jewish people are an ethnicity, but also they have a religion that unites them. So when I'm talking about Jews here, I'm not talking about the religion, I'm talking about the Semitic descent, I mean the Semitic peoples. So just so you know what Semitic means by the way, because this is actually a confusing subject. Sometimes uh, people call even Arabs anti-Semitic. You can't do that because Arabs are Semitic. So, so anyway, there's a proto-Semitic language and the people that still speak descendants of that language are called Semites. And this is actually a biblical name. I think it comes from someone called Sam or something like that. Now I also want to mention, with the advent of genetic genealogic research, which by the way means genetically researching people's ancestries. With the advent of that, there was a lot of research that immediately came, once, once people were able to research their ancestry through their genetics, a lot of papers came out about Jewish ancestry. Uh, of course, because there's a lot of Jewish academics, but also because Jews are people who sometimes lost their homeland and want to, you know, where, want to know where they come from and so on. It's sort of similar to how African-Americans sometimes use genetic genealogic research to discover their ancestry. Well, the initial research on Jewish ancestry which was, for example, 1997, Carl Skorecki made a paper on the subject identifying what we're about to talk about. The initial research was done on uh, particular populations of the Jewish people that were thought to be more purely descended from the original Jewish populations. In particular, there is a priestly class among the Jews called the Levites and the Kohanim. The Kohanim are thought to be, Kohanim, by the way, is plural of Kohen. You've heard this name before, Sasha Baron Cohen, Mickey Cohen, the gangster from Malay, so on. The Cohens are thought to be descendants of Aaron, who is in turn descended from Jacob, who is in turn descended from Levi. And by the way, you've heard the name Levi before. Think of Levi's genes. Yeah, that's the same origin. So the Levites, on the other hand, are thought to descend it from Levi, Levi without being descended from Jacob and Aaron. So they're descended from other people. So basically, the, the Levites are more cousins, thought to be cousins, whereas the Kohanim are thought to be direct descendants from Aaron. So the Kohanim have particular uh, restrictions in the Jewish tradition. For example, they, are, they have restrictions on their marriage, they have to marry from certain people and so on. So they sort of keep the, the ancestry more pure. They also have special rights. For example, they're the only people allowed to go in certain parts of the Jewish temple in Jerusalem. And they're also the priests tr traditionally in the Jewish culture. So initially genetic genealogic researchers wanted to know whether the Kohanim really descended from Aaron. I mean they thought they did. They wanted to know what was that descent from Aaron? What did it look like? Was there a pattern? And what they found was very interesting. Skorecki, the same man I mentioned earlier in 1997, found a pattern among alleles uh, that he called the Kohen modal haplotype. He found this pattern among the Ashkenazi Kohanim as well as the Sephardic Kohanim. It was found in over 48% of Ashkenazi Kohanim and over 58% of Sephardic Kohanim. This pattern was thought to identify the true biblical Aaron. But this got a little bit confusing when it was discovered that the Arabian population also contains a large percentage, Arabian meaning the Arabs of the Arabian Peninsula, contains a large percentage of descent with that exact Cohen modal haplotype. How could that be? The biblical tradition of the Jews and the Arabs does not claim that the Arabs were descended from Aaron. The only similarities in the biblical tradition is that they're both thought to be descended from Abraham. So is that haplotype the marker of the real Abraham? To answer that, I want to direct you to a paper by Kleosov from 2010. Kleosov found two common ancestries among the Arabians and the Kohanim Jews. The first ancestry was that Kohen modal haplotype. And that Kohen modal haplotype, which is a pattern of mutations, turned out to be belonging to a haplogroup called J1E. J1E is a hap, what is a haplogroup? A haplogroup is a major line of descent from the genetic Adam. The more, our, all, all of our most common recent ancestor. There are different haplogroups like E, A, B, J, and J within J, there's a J1 and a J2. The J1E haplogroup was the one that the Cohen modal haplotype was found in. 
Now, interestingly, this shared ancestry from the J1E haplogroup that is identified by the Cohen modal haplotype, it is shared between the Arabs and the Jews, but diverged around 2300 years BC, give or take 500 years. There appears to have been a bottleneck in the ancestry of this exact J1E ancestry that's shared between Jew the Kohanim and the Arabs around 875 AD, give or take 160 years. This means that around 875 AD, something happened to this ancestry among the Jews where maybe one or two people was able to survive. And then that ancestry carried on through them. But this is not so important for what we're talking about here. Now, what about that other common ancestry that I talked about between the Kohanim and the Arabs? The other ancestry relates to J2A. Now, remember that J2 and J1, they diverged as, as ancestries from, from the original J uh, more than 7,000 years ago. So the, the divergence existed a very long time ago, potentially before the Semites ever arrived around the Middle East. They may have still been in Europe, which we'll talk about at a later date. But the point is the J1 and J2 exist both among Arabs and Jews. But interestingly, the J2A haplogroup among the Kohanim is also overrepresented, and exactly that ancestry is also found among modern Arabian populations. And most interestingly, that J2A ancestry diverged around the exact same time, around 2175 BC, give or take 500 years or so. Now, to remind you, we just discovered that the Kohanim, the most thought to be pure-blooded Jews in the world, have two strong ancestries. One is from the J1 group and one is from the J2 group. These two ancestries are also shared with the Arabian population currently, the inhabitants of Arabia, the Arabian Peninsula. The interesting thing is these two ancestries, they, they don't recently have a similar progenitor. They're thousands and thousands and thousands of years ago they separated, more than 7,000 years ago. So these basically there's two lineages that exist among Arabs and Jews that fascinatingly divided at around the exact same time, the second millennium BC. So. Now I'm going a little bit beyond the facts to tell you my interpretation. What could this mean? Well, what I envision is that there was one um, Semitic speaking population that was at the time in the second millennium BC, still speaking one language. And this population had two common ancestries, but probably others also, including E1, B1, B, for example, uh, that Greek, uh, North African, Hitler ancestry, for example. Um, but the J1 and J2 were the main ancestries that they had. And what happened here is that they stopped intermarrying at around the exact same time, despite there being two lineages, which could only mean that the population divided itself and not according to lineage. So how did it divide itself so suddenly? The best explanation is that this was the advent of Judaism. It began two millennia BC, when part of the population of Semitic speaking peoples believed in one God, and the rest, the pagans refused to believe in one God. The pagans later became Phoenicians, Arabs, other peoples, and the monotheists became the Jews. That's the history of the Arabs and the Jews, the cousins that separated in the second millennium because of the Jews' belief in one God and the Arabs' refusal to do that. Anyway, guys, I hope this was interesting for you. Uh, tomorrow, I think I'm going to make a video about the different ancestries of the Arabs also, because we're talking about J1 and J2 being common between the Arabs and the Jews. But the Arabs are even more diverse than what we see at first. We'll continue tomorrow. Thank you so much for bearing with me.